Hi, my name is Mark Brown, and I'm the Executive Officer for the Marin Wildfire Prevention Authority. Today, we'd like to talk about fire behavior in non-treated areas versus fire behavior in treated areas. So let's draw an untreated area. In this untreated area, you're gonna see there's a lot of trees. Some are healthy, some are unhealthy, or maybe even dead. Some of the trees are native, some of them are non-native. We'll have some deciduous trees, and we'll have some evergreen trees mixed in. But what you're gonna notice is that the lower limbs of these trees are nearly touching the ground, or sometimes they're actually touching the ground. Then you'll notice that we have a lot of brush that is underneath these trees. Some of the brush is native, but most of the brush is non-native. And it creates this continuous continuity of fuel along the ground. But it also creates continuity vertically, and you see the brush is actually touching the limbs of these trees. Underneath the brush, now we have deadened down material of various sizes. It could be the leaves from the trees, needles, li limbs that have fallen, or it might even be dead trees that have fallen. We have a lot of those in Marin right now due to sudden oak death. And to the right of this forest, in most of Marin, we have houses. And we really do need to consider houses as a wildfire fuel. So let's talk about wind. And in wildfire behavior, we look at the wind as 20 feet above the fuel. In this case, it's 20 feet above the canopy of these trees. For the sake of this discussion, let's say that this wind is 20 miles an hour at 20 feet above the canopy. The way wind works though, the closer that wind is down to the vegetation or the ground, the friction of the vegetation, the friction of earth, the homes, the terrain, slows that wind down. So we really, as wildland firefighters, think about what we call eye-level wind. That is the wind that really is driving ground fire. And since there's friction from the trees, there's friction from the earth, it's going to slow down. And on average, the eye level wind is half of the 20 foot wind. So it's gonna be in this situation, 10 miles an hour. Now the thing to remember about these winds is that it's the 20 foot winds that really transport the heavy embers long distances. For the most part, long distance embers are not igniting homes. The new merging spot fires near homes ignited by long distance embers create the embers that ignite homes. There are a few exceptions. Perhaps there's a home with combustible roof or there's a lot of de debris on the roof. Those embers can land on that and actually destroy the home. Now it's time to introduce a little bit of fire. And we're gonna put it um, down on the forest floor. We have the wind blowing through our forest, but you notice that the fire starts on the ground fuels to deaden down because that is what drives fire is the deaden down material on the forest floor. Now you notice it's going to start spreading into the brush, then up into the lower limbs of the trees. And you're going to see that the fire is going to spread downwind along the ground fuels. Eventually enough energy we've created that you're going to get what we call torching. So one tree is going to ignite and burn. This is actually called passive crown fire. And it is dependent upon the ground fuels to make this occur. If you don't have the heavy fuel loading on the ground, this isn't going to happen. When that individual torching occurs, you're going to see embers get launched into the 20 foot wind. And that's what's spreading those embers downwind. Now, as the energy starts expanding, increasing, we're going to see more and more fire get into the canopy, create that much more energy, creating larger and heavier embers. We get so much energy in what we call a crown fire. And this is where you have all of the canopies burning and you're also gonna have all the ground fuels burning. You create so much energy that you create a very strong convective column that is lifting heavy embers high into the air. But also due to the convection and the air rising we now create an indraft that is coming into the fire. That indraft actually increases that eye level wind because it needs so much oxygen for this fire to burn 
And this is an example at a small scale of a fire creating its own weather. It's creating these updrafts and creating an indraft that actually increases the wind at eye level. And now you see embers flowing high into the 20 foot wind going downwind, but we're also seeing more embers at the ground level moving downwind towards our homes. And we also have vegetation being removed because of the fire on the windward side of the fire. And so now you actually have less resistance, less friction of the fuel. So the wind that's coming into the fire is even stronger. All right, now let's give ourselves a fresh palette so we can draw a treated area. And you'll see that we have large mature trees but you'll see that we still maintain a continuous canopy. However, we will have fewer trees, mostly due to removing the unhealthy trees or the non-native trees. And what you also notice is that you don't see limbs touching the ground or touching vegetation below it because we have limbed up those lower limbs, removed them to create vertical separation. You'll still see some brush in here. It's widely separated, not touching each other, not touching the canopy, and we're gonna maintain native brush. We're gonna remove the non-native brush. You'll also notice that there is very little dead and down. We're not gonna remove all of the dead and down, but you see a lot of it has been removed. And it's important to, to consider why we keep that continuous canopy. That continuous canopy helps keep the moisture in the ground, which helps forest health, but it also keeps the fuels on the ground more moist so that when embers land there, they're less likely to ignite new spot fires. Now, like uh, the previous forest, we'll add homes right up against our forest because that's what we mostly have in Marin. We'll draw on our wind just as before. We have our 20 foot wind and then we will have our 10 foot eye level wind. Due to some of the removal of the vegetation at the ground level, the eye level wind may be a little bit higher than the untreated areas, but if there's no fire, there's no real concern. Now we're gonna introduce some fire. We'll put it over on the lower left. And as you see, the fire stays low intensity because there's not as many ground fuels. There's not a lot of brush to burn and the brush is separated. So you don't have the fire spreading from one brush plant to the next. And you also don't have the fire climbing from the brush into the trees. You're still gonna have some embers, but they aren't going to lift into the 20 foot winds. They're gonna stay low and only be pushed by that lower eye level wind. Now let's consider that we have a fire that's burning towards this area off to our left of the pallet. And as these embers of this approaching fire comes to the treated area and lands in our treated area, a lot of these embers are gonna self extinguish. They're not gonna ignite anything. But if they do, it's gonna be low intensity and they aren't gonna start fire that creates new embers that get blown long distances. And I really wanna emphasize that we are not looking to stop fire with these treated areas. We're looking to modify the fire behavior. We wanna decrease the intensity, we wanna decrease the rate of spread, and we wanna keep the fire on the ground. This equals more time to evacuate under safer circumstances and it allows our firefighters access and a chance to suppress the fire. Without the heavy fuel loading, fires do not have the energy to create a strong convective column that brings heat into the canopy. It brings fire into the canopy. And that's what lifts those embers up into the air. Without the heavy dead and down, we just don't get the embers that get lifted into the 20 foot winds. None of this works if our residents do not harden their homes or create defensible space. But home hardening and de-space don't work if high energy fires run into our neighborhoods. That's why we have been treating our forests to keep the fire intensity low. And then our residents have been doing a great job of making sure that their homes won't be ignited by fires. And as we discussed before, crown fire needs the ground fuels to be able to continue. So if we have crown fire that is continuing from the left of this picture, approaching our treated area, we're gonna see the crown fire drop out of the crowns of the trees, get down onto the ground, and we will have a low intensity ground fire. I wanna thank you for spending your time with us and watching this video. And I really hope it has helped you understand some of the science behind fire behavior.
Thank you and be fire safe.